Hey guys, this is Mektodjik. Welcome back to another episode of the Translucent Plastics Archive. In today's episode, I'm going to be unboxing this four-port USB 2.0 hub, which is translucent. Um, and I got this for a dollar on eBay. I didn't actually need to get this, uh, but I decided for a dollar, I might as well get it and unbox it for the channel. Uh, the reason it's so cheap is because these things are so easy to find. You can find USB 2 hubs uh, all over the place, really cheap. There are so many of these made, probably millions. Maybe, you know, possibly even almost the billions. Anyway, I'll just tell you about a little bit about this because there was something about it that um, was interesting for me. Firstly, the fact that it's translucent, but if you look on the box here, you'll see that it has two color options, graphite and translucent. The graphite one is the one you see here, and then the translucent one is what we've got inside the box, and you'll see how that differs in color. Um, the reason I mention this is because USB 2 as a standard, uh, I think it was standardized around 2002, uh, I think around 2001, but was sort of released commercially around 2002. And the significance of that is really that uh, Apple had essentially ditched its graphite color scheme by that point. The iBook graphite had been ditched. The uh, iMac graphite G3 was also gone uh, from that by about that point. All replaced, of course, by the iMac G4s and the, the white and the aluminium design language. However... The graphite coloring, uh, which was the Apple marketing term for, you know, translucent gray, was continued not by Apple, but by accessory producers who essentially didn't feel the need to change the neutral coloring. I mean, it already went well enough with most of the products anyway, even though they weren't really making anything graphite at that point. I think they may have still been making some displays that had a bit of that coloring, but other than that, there was no graphite color for Apple anymore. But these USB 2 hubs were being made. So... I thought I'd unbox this and tell you a little bit about it, and it, it, I think it's complete in box, uh, though it is not sealed. We will see what's inside. It should have everything in there. Uh, so yeah, USB 2.0. Uh, if you look at the requirements here, you can see it, it supports Windows XP, so you can see it's that kind of era. Uh, of course, it supports Mac OS. Uh, Mac, Mac OS 9, though, was not ever compatible with USB 2. Uh, it would run, it, it would run, but at USB 1.0 speeds, so 1.1 speeds anyway. Let's have a look. So there you, there it is right there. And you can see that it is in fact translucent, like a pure, a clear coloration rather than graphite, which is what the box looks like. You can see the difference there. Graphite, I would have preferred actually, but um, this translucent is pretty nice too. I mean, the thing that, some people like this more. The thing that's great about it is you can really see just everything. It, there's no hiding the look behind a sort of frosted glass, you know. It's just purely all the electronics are right there for you to see. The PCB, the ports, the soldering, um, all of that. It's all there. So, uh, oh, plus the capacitors and everything else. It's, it's all there, essentially. Uh, then you've got the USB cable. You can see the USB B to USB A. I'm not sure if this is original, but it is kind of appropriate for the time. They would, most companies by this point, they may still be doing some translucent stuff, but they weren't really bothering to go the whole way. Uh, by making translucent cables as well, though it would be a nice thing to have, right? Um, yeah, it, it kind of shows that the design language by this point was kind of over. It was just a sort of remnant by this point. Uh, and then you've got, which is kind of regrettable, but this big, beefy, standard power supply. Uh, this is Australian, because I'm in Australia, but yeah, essentially just a power supply. So I think this kind of one would be able to run uh, without the power supply, as long as you don't overload the power requirements. So we should be able to get something like a mouse running through here. Now to test that, I've brought in uh, something that would actually need a USB hub, uh, my 2009 MacBook Air. So, you know, something that only has one USB port, it kind of benefits from having a hub. So let's just get that hub out and then we'll try plug in some accessories and see whether they actually work. And we'll also see how the, uh, the translucent hub lights up when it's powered. All right, so here we are with the hub. Let's get it powered on. Typical for this era, you get something kind of like a, yeah, there's a red light. That would probably look nicer at nighttime, wouldn't it? Uh, so there's the hub powered. Now I'm going to put in the mouse. We're going to use my um, translucent mouse that I've used in the past, the iOpti Junior, which is, I think is just so nice. Fits the design language very well, right? Because you've got some pure clear plastics there. Of course, this was made in around 2000, maybe 2001. This is 2003. So you can see there's a, that, that language is still there, that design style. 
This of course has a translucent cable, which is nicer. Plug that in. And there you go, that's powering. No problems, is it working in the OS? Yep, just fine. Yep. A little shaky, but that's just from, probably from the table. And the next thing I'll plug in, the next thing I'll plug in is this uh, gigabit ethernet to USB adapter. Now I don't think we'll get, you will not get gigabit, gigabit speeds through a USB 2 hub, but it should at least pick it up. And it, I don't think it would really require extra power. All right, it's detected it, so that's fine. That's working, great. Uh, the next thing I'll try, which I think is where we're gonna get failure, is using a Apple USB keyboard. I'll plug that in. It's probably gonna give me the power notice now if I plug this one in. Which way does this go? The failure of USB always can't work out which way to go. Uh, we're plugged in. Oh, what do you know? We're actually, we've actually got a working keyboard as well. If I just, yep, that's all working just fine. Wow. Okay, so three ports are all plugged in and that's still working. So we're gonna to have to push this a little further. All right, I didn't expect to overload it that much uh, without actually giving it some external power. I guess that maybe my expectations were lower than I thought. All right, we'll give it a fourth accessory, a mouse, another mouse. Well, that's fine, M mice don't require much power. What if I plug the mouse into the keyboard? So a hub, going through a hub. That's fine too, cool. Wow, we're getting a lot of power here. So the next thing I'm gonna try, which I think is gonna finally overload it, will be this disk drive, just a standard one. I want a translucent one of these, but I just cannot get one that actually works. Though I will show you some in a later video. All right, plugging that in now. Let's see what happens. Uh, there's a disk in there, so it should be able to pick up the disk. Oh clicking too many things right now. Are we gonna get the disk to pick up? Uh, there is a disk in there, so it should show up on the desktop, but I think it's not doing it. That's probably pushed it too far. Yep, that's not gonna work. So it's making noises, but it's not, yeah, it's not picking it up. Okay, so that probably means we need more power. So in that case, that's when you would need to add the, uh, the power supply. But uh, otherwise, pretty cool that you can just get those things working. I didn't actually test this gigabit ethernet, so why don't I just go get a cable and then we'll see if that works too. All right, it's a bit of a stretch, but I managed to get it, uh, an ethernet cable in this setup. Let's plug that in. All right, that's plugged in now. Running off this single USB 2 hub without any external power. All uh, right, network. Well, it's plugged in. Hmm. But it's not detecting it. So that may require more power as well. Just to make sure that's still working, that's actually working as it should be, I will just plug it in straight into the port. Let's just give that a go. And that's still not working. So I guess I'll have to try uh, Apple's official Ethernet adapter. I think that this may be too new, being gigabit, uh, and probably doesn't work. All right, final solution. I've got the official uh, Apple USB Ethernet adapter. This is the one that was made for these original MacBook Airs because, of course, they didn't have Ethernet on board and there was no Thunderbolt yet. So the only way you could actually get Ethernet is by a USB 2 cable. So this is USB 2. It's, I think it may claim to be... I think it's 10 base 100, I think. It's so pretty pretty slow, but workable, right? And I think still better than Wi-Fi. Well, at least more reliable. If I plug that in, we should be able to get an ethernet connection right away. I'll just check that. Yeah, there you go. That's looking more, that's looking more likely. There we go. So that's, there we go, that's fully connected. Okay, great. So what? that's just straight through from the, obviously that's gonna work. Now we'll try it with the hub and see whether there's enough power there to actually work. I always like this uh, early original MacBook Air design. I think it's really nice. You've got a backlit keyboard, which you didn't have on the 2010 models. Uh, you've got the door back here. You've got the door, which actually hides the ports, which is really cool because you can hide them if you don't need them. 
uh, and of course the uh, recessed MagSafe cable at the back there. So when you're using it, you don't actually have to see any ports. And I think that's something that Johnny Ive really liked, but had to ditch for the later, um, for the later revisions. All right, now we're putting in the ethernet cable into our USB hub running through the hub. All right, let's see if it works. Just have to wait for it. And sure enough, we have an IP. Great, how cool is that? So basically this hub is pretty damn awesome. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure most USB hubs can do this and I, I'm, I'm probably biased because I've been using uh, a mixture of older tech recently and I probably didn't know that these could do that, but they actually have enough power just from the port to uh, provide enough to power all of these accessories. Uh, two mice, uh, keyboard, keyboard, a mice running through a keyboard. Um, it, the only thing it couldn't really do was this uh, DVD drive, which is pretty understood, right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, in terms of design, uh, there wasn't too much to say about this, except that it's interesting that the translucent look continued even after Apple itself kind of left it behind. Uh, especially that graphite one. I wish I could have got a graphite one in USB 2.0 because obviously if you get a USB 2.0 based, or sorry, if you get a USB 1, obviously a graphite tower, Power Mac G4, but then you put a USB 2 card in it, then you could run a hub through it and you would get a graphite accessory that runs through a graphite Mac, which is what I'd love to do um, just because it's cool. But since I can't do that, uh, Anyway, the point is I've got one of these and I probably will use this for something cool in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.